Okay. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Hollywood Persona. I am Mitch. That is Ant. How are you, Ant? Good, Mitch. Got some awesome new releases. Fall movie season is finally here. The most exciting time of year for us. So I'm... I know you texted me that the other day and I was like, fuck, we are in fall movie yeah, season. Yeah, it starts now. And it's like, I start to get anxiety of, can I see everything, you know? Yeah. Um, well, you're doing a really good job. Uh, I know. I'm on, I'm on a good streak, you know, yeah. for now. Because we are going to talk Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, and I'm going to talk about some older movies that I've been catching up on. But Ant has seen Foe. Um, that's with Saoirse Ronan, right? And, and Paul uh, Mescal. Yes. Um, and then Dick's the Musical and Nyad with... Uh, Nyad is with Jodie Foster and Annette Benning. Um, and did you say Killers of the Flower Moon? Yeah, that's I started with that. Okay. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about just some other movies. I, I've been sick and busy, so I haven't really seen too much new um but that's okay i've been seeing a lot catching up on a lot of old horror which uh which has been nice and um we're shooting to record again on monday night and on and then i will release that on tuesday and we will have uh reviews of five nights at freddy's both of us will see it anatomy of a fall both of us are going to see that and uh, I'm going to try to see The Killer. I will have seen it too. I'm seeing it tomorrow. Okay, so we're I'm going to see The Killer Sunday. So we're going to do that um, on Monday. So it uh, won't be too long between episodes. Uh, we also don't have a ton of news this episode because we do want to like really get into Killers of the Flower Moon. I have a lot to say. Um, I think Anthony does as well. Yeah, definitely. I've actually seen it twice now. So I, right. I... you have spent six and a half hours with this movie or seven or so seven. oh man yeah we'll get to it i have such a complaint about something outside <laughs> of the movie when we get there i i do too actually um so podcast business um our first patreon episode we are going to record sunday night possibly if aunt isn't too hungover but if not it'll be <laughs> shortly after that um he's doing some halloween fun i have the kids so we're going to do some we're I am not fun as be well. Over. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> so we are going to record our first one and it's going to be a recap of the month. Um, we're going to kind of just like go back over our notes, talk about some of the big news stories and maybe see where things have come, like what's changed. And then we're going to talk about our favorite top five or whatever we've seen from October um yeah. we could even do new and old you know like uh a, a mix or do each but uh we, yeah we're just gonna kind of it's gonna be fun and that'll be patreon only so uh, uh i'm excited about that and we have that movie to watch for the patreon subscriber as well which we could do there as we well. do um i th i think we'll do that on a separate episode just because i looked at that movie and it's like three and a half hours oh is I, it okay I don't know where we're going to find the time because before, you know what I mean? Trying to get all these in for Monday. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I, yeah, I just want to mention it to make sure we still have it on the radar. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, I talked to Matt. He's the one who assigned us that he's not, uh, he's not stressing about it, but, uh, he, he really wants us to see it. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. one I hadn't heard of. He said it, it hit him really in the right spot. So hopefully cool. it, it does for us too. Um, I am, I think I'm out of the face of horror competition. Oh uh, we no. We find out officially tomorrow morning at 10 AM. But um, man, it was uh, such a back and forth. And I, I made it into first with a bunch of people's help. And then like two minutes before the voting closed the girl who's been in first like basically the last four or five days she jumped back into first and um and then my screen went black and so we will see um but i'm probably out of it uh, i just want to thank everyone who voted i it's just i you know it's not usually me to like ask so much of people <laughs> You know, I hate doing that, and and you guys too. have, you guys have just like, you know, I don't even like asking for help at work or whatever, 
Um, so to ask people to like do this in their daily schedule and and people actually doing it just meant a lot means a lot to me. So thank you everyone who voted. Um, I will not do it again next year. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, so movie news. Uh, you got two things here. I'm gonna let you talk about those first, and then cool. uh, I got I got a couple things. All right. Yeah. So for movie news, um, this was a big bummer to me to hear both of these things. All right. So it's about Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part Two. First of all, they're changing the name, taking off the Dead Reckoning part two part which i was trying to think of uh, any time that this happens before and i couldn't think of any time that a movie part one has come out and they drop the part two yeah before the next one comes out so that sucks but i get why they're doing it but the other the worst part is it is now delayed till may 2025 which is almost a full year after it was supposed to come out it was supposed to come out june next year you know i i think we both really liked that last one and yeah. was really looking forward to the conclusion. Um, but it's going to have a three-week IMAX run, so it won't r- run into a Oppenheimer uh, brick wall. Mm. But, yeah, it sucks. I want to see that movie bad. Um, you know, I guess that gives Tom Cruise and mm. – um, is it Warner oh. Brothers? Universal more time to mm. promote it. And I bet this is a casualty of the strikes as well, you know, because I don't think they've been able to shoot – I I just I just can't believe they were that far behind. I know a whole year. Like, yeah, like looking at twenty twenty, looking at May twenty twenty five to me might as well be a ten years from now, right? Like yeah, that's so it's, far away. It's, I know where it's gonna like by next year we're gonna start seeing trailers and it's gonna feel like not as long, but it it is right now. So yep. And guess what? This coming Friday, not today, but next Friday we would be seeing Dune Part Two. I know the, <laughs> the the poster is still up with the same date on it at my theater. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so that's the Mission Impossible news. Delayed and the name change. Don't know what the title's going to be, but I think they're doing it as a marketing thing to try and trick people to think, oh, you don't have to have seen the first one to come out to see this new one. I think that's what they're trying to do. So, all right, yeah, next – next, new, yeah, it is, it is really weird. But um, all right, the next news story, which is kind of exciting that I was following, is the Gotham Awards nominations yeah. have been announced. You know, these are always the first ones, which is crazy to me. They come out now when we're not even in November, let alone December, right? Um, but I, it, lo- to me, it's it boggles my mind. Like, who's seen all these movies and how are they voting? And and you exactly. know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Yeah. So, um, you know, and they announced the winners November twenty seventh. So it's like it's all done for before December oh, when wow. all the movies come out. So here's what's listed as best feature. But the reason I'm bringing these up is this is all. Often a precursor to what we're going to see at the Oscars, right? Yeah. Guess what we have? Passages as best best picture. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I I've know, right? One. Yeah, we both have. We both liked it. Then Past mm-hmm. Lives, which did you catch that one yet? Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan. That's it's, right. It, it's like I'm not a big romance guy, and it's and and it falls more in that category. But yeah, yeah. okay, but yeah. Past Lives. Uh, then the next three I haven't heard of. Reality, um, showing up. And a thousand and one. Really? All right. And then, so hmm. uh, le- uh, outstanding lead performance, you have Franz Rogowski from Passages, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Greta Lee, the girl from Past Lives. Um, mm-hmm. Lily Gladstone. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Jeffrey Wright in American Fiction, which is a highly anticipated movie for me. Yeah. Who directed that again? I can't remember, but it won the audience award at TIFF, I think. Right, 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 right. I know yeah. we talked about it at some point. We did, yeah. yep. And then supporting performance has Juliette Binoche, Penelope Cruz, and Ferrari. Jamie Foxx in They Clone Tyrone. Hmm. Right? Crazy. Claire Foy. These... Hmm. Go ahead. No, these are some odd... Like, I mean... Yeah. We all liked his performance in that, but these are some odd choices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Claire Foy and all of us strangers haven't seen that. Ryan Gosling and Barbie. Uh, Glenn Howerton for Blackberry. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. I knew you'd be happy about that one. <laughs> oh, I even even Florence, like my friend Film Vault, you know, she was like, can we start? She, she just watched it on the plane. And she's like, can we start a campaign for him? And I'm like, <laughs> I think it's kind of already started. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see it here. Next one is Sandra Hewler. She's the woman from 
Anatomy of a Fall, but this is for the movie The Zone of Interest. She's in both these movies this year. No way. Okay. Yeah. I'm really excited for Zone of Interest. Me too. That's another big one. Um, then we got Rachel McAdams and Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, Charles yeah. Melton in May, December, and Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers, which, oh, that. Oh, yeah, I want to see that. Oh, Alexander yeah. Pain. That'll be my next news story I'll mention. Okay. And that's about I'll... it. Um, that's about it for the. There's some more. You guys can look them up, but I just wanted to read the best actor, best supporting, and best picture. Okay. But um, yeah, I have one more news story before you go, Mitch. Okay. And that well, is the. What was the movie I just mentioned with? Um, the holdovers. Alexander the holdovers. Payne, yes, Diamati. the holdovers has a preview screening at two o'clock at some theaters in North America this weekend. So if you guys hear this before Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, you might be able to go see the holdovers mm. in theaters uh, before mm. it comes out. I should check my theaters, but they probably won't be. I can't even find the killers in my theaters. I, but luckily, my in the indie theater near me is playing it. Um, oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I have the one killer. theater playing the killer in all of Atlanta. So, um, oh, geez. Yeah. Yep. And there's lots of theaters around here. So, um, so yeah. All right. Go ahead. What yeah. news stories do you have? Nothing crazy. Um, the roles uh, in Frankenstein, uh, Del Toro's uh, Frankenstein, he right. he is making. Um, he has cast the three lead roles, and it is Mia Goth as the bride, cool, <clears throat> Oscar Isaac as the monster, and Andrew Garfield as Doctor Frankenstein. So I think those are three really good actors, and I think that's really cool and you got del toro helming it um so i'm excited for that yeah that sounds good where has andrew garfield been actually speaking of right well i mean Sp spider-man and then no wasn't it last year he no last year was tick tick boom no that, yeah, I think that was two years ago that was two years ago well yeah i don't know he's been he's been around okay been all right around. go ahead um and then in news that i think we all kind of knew already but uh Fantastic Beast director says the franchise has been, and I quote, parked by Warner Brothers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so there are no plans for future ones. And uh, that comes from director David Yates, who just directed something that came out this weekend. Um, Final Nights, Five Nights at Freddy's. Did he direct that? I don't think so. Oh, anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, and then uh, Zelda Williams is the daughter of Robin Williams, uh, and her uh, directorial debut has a teaser trailer right now. Uh, it comes out in February and is called Lisa Frankenstein. Not uh, Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Newton tries to spark a romance with Cole Sprouse's reanimated corpse. Uh, and so it'll be, be interesting. I just got to let this fucking cat out. Hold on. Okay. Your dog is uh, being better than the freaking cat. I know, he's um, like staring at me. Is he? Yeah. All right, and so yeah, so that's my news stories. We didn't have a lot because we want to spend some time on uh, these movies that we saw. So uh, let's let's get in. Did you have anything else? No, that's it. Well, I can do box office. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah box office, yes. Box office. All right, yeah, so this will be quick. There is... Um... All right, so... This was last weekend, um, you know, ending Sunday, the 22nd. We're coming up on the, the next weekend. But so last weekend it was Taylor Swift's second weekend. She made 33.2, which is a 64% drop, um, which ain't bad at all. She's at over 150 domestically. And um, interestingly enough, well, I'll get to it. So then Killers of the Flower Moon made 23.2, which isn't that great. You know, it's good for this kind of a movie. Guess the um, budget. Yeah, I was just going to say, for a $200 million movie, that's not what you want. <laughs> but, um, you know, wow. Apple wasn't, Apple didn't finance this, just like the Irishman being final, um, just like the Irishman being 
financed by Netflix, they weren't right. expecting to get two hundred million dollars back in box office from that. So they're not true. Insane. Okay. Yeah, it's more for prestige to have work with Martin Scorsese. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Um. But so yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon, 23.2 in number two. Exorcist Believer is still doing well with 5.6 million in number three. Paw Patrol, 4.4. And the night before Christmas re-release in uh 4.2 million. Okay. So a couple more um uh box office related things. So 46% <laughs> of opening night viewers for Killers of the Flower Moon were under 35, which I think is a great great statistic that shows that you know young people still will come and see movies if mm-hmm. they're good if they're interested so because you always hear people don't want to go to the movies anymore um but this stat kind of shows not not really um yeah the, that that stat was not true for my theater but uh we will that's, yeah that's right <laughs> yeah i don't uh, know you know they do they poll uh yeah. exit audiences at a bunch of different theaters throughout the country um so well, you got you got asked just recently about an exit. Uh, I did, yeah, to Dix the musical. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They a twenty four asked you on your way out. That's kind of yeah. cool. Yep. Yeah, it was cool. And I yeah. asked that lady, "How do I get her job?" And I applied for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sound of Freedom finally finished its theater run after fifteen weeks worldwide. It made two hundred and thirty eight million on a fifteen dollar fifteen million dollar budget. Good on them. Mm-hmm. Good for them. They made their mo- they made a lot of money back. So who knows what they will come out with next. Uh, Angel Studios is the one that did that. Mm -hmm. And then just an interesting footnote is worldwide Killers of the Flower Moons was number one at 44 million um, total worldwide. Yeah, yeah. uh, With Taylor at 43. So just a million different. But it's funny to see domestic Taylor was number one, but worldwide Killers of the Flower Moon was number one. Worldwide. I mean, Killers of the Flower Moon doesn't seem like a movie, but I guess that would you know, break overseas or anything. But, right, uh, right. I would think it'd be North American audiences that care the most about that kind of yeah. movie. Well, speaking of that, let's uh, let's jump right into Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, let's talk about it. <clears throat> so Killers of the Flower Moon is a 2023, Ameri- 2023 film, uh, more of a crime drama. Uh, it stars, or... Excuse me, it's directed by Martin Scorsese, who co-wrote the screenplay with Eric Roth, not Eli Roth. I was really confused for a second. Eric <laughs> Roth is the person who brought us uh, like Forrest Gump, Munich, the Curious Case of Benjamin Button. He's a pretty uh, renowned writer. It is based on the 20 se- 2017 book of the same name by David Gran. It uh, it set it centers on a series of Oklahoma Oklahoma murders in the Osage Nation during the 1920s, committed after oil was discovered on tribal land. Uh, we've got our leads: Leonardo DiCaprio, Lily Gladstone, and Robert De Niro. Um, but we also got Jesse Plemons in there, Tantu Cardinal, John Lithgow, Brennan Fraser uh, is in there. Uh, can't think of any yeah that's about it eh? yeah there's a, there's, lot, a, like, there's a couple yeah. other cameos that you might not even want to mention that's true yes or yes. i guess did you already say john lithgow i did say john lithgow actually okay. yes yeah I, then I, that, that pretty much covers it yeah um and it's funny like i knew brent like brendan fraser had been talked about being in this for a long time because obviously he kind of had his comeback last year um yeah and this really... was filmed before the whale yeah, right. This was supposed to come out, I think, two years ago. Yeah, like development began in 2016. Like they had, yeah. like he he bought the rights to the book. Um, yeah. So production was supposed to begin in 2018. And yeah, then they had a bunch of issues. Um, this is an Apple TV Plus movie, um, uh, as well as Paramount Pictures also has some, you know, money in there. Yeah, uh, it premiered. At, yeah, it premiered at the seventy sixth Cannes Film Festival, and uh, yeah. So that is uh, anything else I should say about the plot? Um. Yeah. Well, I so I don't think you mentioned Jesse Plemon plays the role of the FBI agent, which comes in around the two and a half two third hour, hour mark. mark. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, an interesting uh, what I've learned so far is the book is censored or, or sorry, not censored, focused around the FBI, right? So the oh. book title is called Killers of the Flower Moon, sub, col- sub um, colon, 
the 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 beginning of the FBI or something like that. It was okay. right around when the FBI was um, established under uh, what's his name Truman. The Osage murders and the birth of the FBI. Thank you. The birth okay. of the FBI. Yeah. Cool. So I didn't. Yeah. Martin Scorsese chose to not tell it by, you know, not use the FBI as the main character. Originally, Leo was supposed to play the head of the FBI, and he decided to, you know, um, have it centered around the two villains, you know, and and have more of um, the Osage woman, uh, Molly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. played by L- Lily Gladstone. Did you ever see First Cow? She was in First Cow. I did see First Cow, yeah. Yeah, she was like the wife in that movie of the – the the people they were stealing steal stealing the cow milk from I think she was right. the wife I think yeah um so that's that's all I'd seen her from but yeah so that's the plot and it's yeah long. and so we follow basically we follow Ernest Burkhart yep uh, he's just returned from World War One um, and he has nowhere really to go so he goes to his uh, uncle uh, King Hale played by his name is William but they call him King Hale. Um, and he's played by Robert De Niro, and um, and De Niro is there. De Niro's character, King Hale, he is now living in this area where the Osage uh, people live because there's oil there, and it's just it's bringing in the white men, right? Because this is a world where there's uh, Native Americans. They call them Indians throughout the movie. Uh, I've been trying to say the Osage people because I don't, you know. Um, <clears throat> I saw a guy comment over in a group on Film Vault saying he's Indian and he doesn't, he says, like, you know, if you call these people Indian, he he said that's okay. But anyways. Yeah, I've heard that um, too. I've heard that, like, other people have decided that Indian is the wrong thing to say, not yeah. necessarily the Indian people, you know, so it's interesting. Um, and, you know, uh, one other thing, a background piece I learned was these Osage people, mm-hmm. they were moved from Arkansas to Oklahoma. Right. Oh, so they've already been. They've displaced. already been displaced. Then they find the oil on their land, mm. and it's like, okay, well, we were we were lucked out by God, right? Our God decided for the hardship we went through, we land on this oil, and like mm. you said, it just brings in the worst kind of people, right? And yeah. in the beginning of the movie, we see the Osage live high. They have modern homes, mansions. They have people that live oh live in God. nannies, yeah. chauffeurs. You know, they have very nice clothing and they live like and the, a title card tells us that they are the richest people per capita in the whole mm-hmm. world, not just in the, in the United States at the time. Um, but then as the movie goes on, right, we we see how the white man is insidious and s- just snakes and slithers his way into all these people's business and trying to separate them from their money. Yeah. Um, and it's. It's I so we can let's talk about our thoughts of the movie. I thought it was excellent. I really liked it a lot, Mitch. Um, you know, it's definitely long. There are some places I think that could be cut. Let me give an example. There's a scene where someone is killed. We know what's happened. We then see in the courtroom they describe the killing. Mm-hmm. There's a, a prosecutor is examining a witness and saying, So you did this, you took this person here, you shot them this way, blah, blah, blah. Then we cut to that scene and we watch her get killed. And it's like, you could have cut that because we already know what happened, right? Like, that's a few minutes. So, yeah, I think there's a few places that it could be trimmed. But, um, you know, the first time I saw it, I went to a, like, 9.30 p.m., the latest showing they had of this. So I knew I was going to be out late. And I don't remember checking my watch until, like, three hours in or maybe two and a half hours in. But the, the piece I wanted to say that had nothing to do with this movie was I went to see it at an AMC in their Dolby Theater. Mm-hmm. I I lo- I made a note of this because it was so infuriating. It was 28 minutes before the studio logos for the movie started. So the start time was 9 p.m. The studio logos didn't start for 28 minutes. I'm like, for all movies, for you to have 28 minutes of logos and advertisements and trailers, oh, it's just fucking ridiculous. So That's that made it a four-hour movie for me. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what was, was your... it like that the second time? So the second time I saw it at the theater I work at, no, okay. we we only have about ten minutes of trailers. That's ridiculous. Oh man, um, I'm so mad. But yeah, so what was your what was your theater experience like? Yeah, and I should have said at the beginning, but Ant and I are gonna get into spoilers, and we will let you know when. 
um because i i, I really just want to like get into this but yeah i really like this too um my I, I keep bringing up the film vault but my friends anderson and brian over at the film vault did not like it as much as us and yeah listen to that episode i was really surprised Go, yeah keep going and anderson like almost hated it and and he just he felt like it wasn't challenging enough and I felt like this isn't a movie where I I needed to be challenged. I just soaked it all in and I just really loved it. Like the Irishman, I, f I fucked that movie. Like, like, I don't, I did not like the Irishman. Okay. Uh, like it was okay. Uh, I, I was more bored uh, than I, you know, it was way too boring, way too frustrating. I, I didn't find anything exciting about it, but this, I was like, so into it and we get incredible performances from our three leads here like lily gladstone deserves all the awards she's great she is she's so amazing. good in this. i mean she has to be crying and in dis in distress for the most of the time she's on screen yeah. imagine being and on sweating. a set with thousands of people around you and you have to just make yourself cry over and over and look terrible yeah. and i mean scream crying she's losing her whole family over this movie yeah. right like people yeah. dropping like flies around her yeah. she was she was just amazing she was so so good so amazing and uh you know DiCaprio. this is the best de niro i've seen in a long time like i agree he, he was I, really good i felt like he was really giving it his all like i, I mean I, and i feel like people are just kind of kind of like not like i think he deserves an oscar nom for this as well like i, I could he was... see that i could yeah. see that i really do and it makes me think like <laughs> you know instead of all those stupid comedy movies he does uh it's like man if only he could make one with scorsese every year we could get this good of a performance out of him because yeah, yeah so he he's you know early in the movie and this, this so i'll keep everything to like first act type stuff yeah, yeah early yeah. in the movie like you said, Ernest comes home from the war. He had an injury, so he can't lift heavy stuff. So, but he comes to his uncle for work, and um, yeah, his uncle's like the the unofficial mayor of the town. He pays for mm -hmm. hospitals and schools and roads and all kinds of shit, right? Yeah. But secretly and underhandedly, he's really trying to screw these people over, and he's he plays it so well because to be a snake like that, you've got to be charming and have some charisma, right? Because you got to yeah. win people over and have the Osage people like you. But then when the doors are closed, do underhanded bullshit and and be evil and be OK with being evil. So, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. He was fantastic. He was really good. And I really like the way, you know, so Ernest comes to town to live with his uncle and he and De Niro's character and De Niro's son. So um, or was it it wasn't was it Leonardo's brother? Or it was Byron? his brother. So it must have. Yeah, Byron was his brother. So they must have yeah. both been uncles, which that was that relationship was a little weird to me. I was a little. Yeah, seemed like his son almost. But I think he'd just been a part of the family more. Yeah, I think he was um, there the whole time. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, so we, we kind of like almost as soon as they get in the room alone together where it's uh, his uncle and him, you know, he, he you know, he says to him like, Oh, you know, uh, what about that? You know, we gotta get you some money. There's some ways to get you some money. And uh, you know, Leonardo, you see it in the trailer. He says, "Oh, I do like that money, sir." And uh, and so he slowly works his nephew over to his side. Um, yeah, and I liked how the character Leonardo Leo plays as Ernest. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've seen Leo play a character like this because he's really kind of dumb. He's a dim bulb. Dumb he's a sharp. As a is a is a dull knife right and yeah. so you don't really notice it in that conversation but yeah. there's hints dropped right he asks Ernest, do you like to read and Ernest was like read yeah i can read he's like no do you like to read do you read you know he has to keep yeah. asking him the question over and over because yeah. the guy's a little slow and i thought that was cool for leo to take a bad guy character basically right yeah let's um... Okay, let's just say a few more things and then let's jump into spoilers. Yeah, this is this is now getting into what I really I really want to like get deep into this. All right, um, so I have some other non-spoiler stuff. I really like okay, the music in this. I like the music Same. a lot. The score and whatever music they used, it was like very cool and smooth, <clears throat> um, but bumpy at sometimes, like a drum beat. You know, like something that Native Americans would use. Um, and um, I, I just heard on the film vault. I don't know if you listened, but it was Jack White who did a lot of the. I did score. hear that. Yeah. yeah. And Sorry. one other thing I noticed was there was a song used in this movie 
-hmm. It's considered ragtime music. It's kind of like 1940s music, Mm -hmm. which whenever The Aviator came out, another Scorsese, Leonardo DiCaprio movie, I loved that movie. Me too. I love The Aviator. Oh, it's so cool. We should talk about it one time. Yeah, Um, I do love that movie. I downloaded the whole soundtrack. I'm like, oh, this weird old music is kind of cool. And there's there's a song. Um, it might be Al Jolson or uh, Benny Goodman, like really, really old ragtime music. And yeah. it's used in both The Aviator and in this movie. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I bet he loves that song because he used it here. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So the, and then yeah, a couple other things. I think the story pulled me right in. I was very interested in this. The mm. level of set design you know, clothing, casting of extras. They filmed it in Oklahoma. It feels very authentic. So it's very easy to just not forget I'm watching a movie, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, there was maybe one or two shots that had green screen, I think, that look, that stood out to me. Um, but yeah, overall, it's great. And I think, I think that's probably all I can say. Um, and then we can jump into spoilers if you want. Yeah, I'll just say... Um really good i yeah i was gonna say i I have written here the score really good Uh, i like the undertones like you know it's pretty score heavy but you don't always notice it Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of score and then and then tribal or sorry not tribal i guess more native american but like you know a lot of a lot of score throughout this whole movie and you don't notice it until all of a sudden you're like oh there this score has been going like there's been yeah a beat yeah a drum beat yeah. all in the background that's that's helping like build the tension of what we're seeing you know or, exactly yeah making you feel um, a certain way yeah and DiCaprio's really good um I could see him getting another nomination um and I love the character of Molly I love Lily Gladstone and ultimately I think if Irishman which it did get a best picture nom I think if it can get a best picture nom this is like a shoe in to get one I think so too um especially with 10 nominations this this yeah, is yeah i right? think it's best yeah it's best picture worthy i think this is a movie that yeah. when you look back 10 years in the back and say what was the culture like back then let's look at the 10 movies that were best picture i think yeah. this is fault fits right there you know and before we get into spoilers i will tell my i, I i'm just going to tell my story my oh yeah my what funny was that story so i i you know i i see a lot of movies by myself and and this one i was i felt like the eighth we you know ninth wheel because there was like three old couples right throughout the theater <laughs> and there was, <laughs> there was a, a, a an old like you know couples right there's two old couples at the back of the theater another older couple like you know just kind of behind me down a little bit and then some uh in front of me down a little bit and the old couple behind me talked through the entire thing not oh. Not it wasn't <clears throat> irritating, but I they were so far behind me that I didn't care so much. Yeah. Um. And and they were older, and I know like they were asking each other's questions, and and they were you know more about what was going on in the movie. Um. So I I wasn't too bothered by it, and uh, but the first forty minutes of this movie, there was this guy. There was actually sorry, there was one other guy who'd come alone. He was older. And he he had like I swear to God he had like an alarm going off on his phone, uh, and he couldn't hear it. Really? Yes. Yeah, so it just kept going on and Who on. Who are and then, these people? <laughs> and then every time, like I, it would stop for twenty minutes, and then the alarm would go off again. I'm like, do you have pills you need to take? Like this is. Are a, you pressing <laughs> snooze? Like what? Yeah. What is going on? So, anyways, the story doesn't end there. There's 40 minutes left in this movie, okay? 40 minutes, and and it's still, like, and, you know, and it's still going along. There's 45 minutes. Three kids walk into the theater. <laughs> like, uh, maybe 18, you know, 17. And they come, and they, and I'm in, like, the middle. And there's all this room in the theater. They come sit right in front of me. <laughs> right in front of me. Three kids, and, like, I'm like, what the fuck? and so and they sat there and they watched the rest of the movie they saw they just sat and watched the last 40 minutes of the movie that's so and bizarre yeah so i i when i was leaving i was like i was like oh did you guys i was joking i said did you guys sneak in from another movie what did you go see before that and they were like oh no no we were just really late <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> come what? on come on and then you're I, not like, three hours late <laughs> 
And then I was like, I was like joked with them and I was like, oh, do you, uh, do you want me to explain the first three hours for you? And like, the, and the guy turned around and he's like, yeah, that'd be great. And I was like, I was like, I'm kidding. And I walked away. They were high out of their minds or something. Uh, but it was so anyway, so that's my funny story. We're going to get into spoilers now. Um, yeah. So spoilers. All right. Um, so what'd you think of the ending? The denouement, the wrap up with Martin Scorsese on the stage. Yeah, I thought well, that was yeah. kind of cool. I thought that I was liked cool. it. At first, I was like, uh, you know, I kind of just wanted it to be over um, because it was so long. And I was like, but then it was a really interesting way of doing that. Yeah, and... with the sound effects, with the full band. Mm -hmm. No, you know, most of the time we just get text on the screen that says Ernest exactly. Gladstone did it. But this tells, this is just a unique way of doing it. And yeah. it's cool to see Martin Scorsese at 80 years old doing yeah. different things that we don't normally see. Yeah, it was, uh, to see him walk out, it, it definitely put, like, gave me chills. Um, you know, I, 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 this movie almost brought me to tears a couple times. Like, you know, like, not tears, but like, I could feel myself like, you know, I was really this. If I had to describe this movie in one word, I would describe it as heavy. It is mm -hmm. a very heavy movie. And uh, yeah, so when he came out at the end, um, you can tell he has a lot of reverence for the story. And, yeah. Yep. And so and to hear that this was more of an FBI story at in, or a partly an FBI story in the book. So for him to to focus it more on the Native Americans um means that this is what he wanted to do yep because i've also heard some some frustration because this should have been lily gladstone's movie i've heard that too and i want to push back on that but tell me what your thoughts are on it well because that would have been a little, maybe a little harder to do because especially near the end of the movie where she's basically dying for the last yeah, two hours that's a good point yep uh or or what you know an hour and 45 minutes um yeah, so I I I think seeing this through Ernest's eyes was kind of smart because it kind of teased out this story. We got to see it through this dumbass's eyes. Um I like I I think there's the one part that bothered me a little bit was I didn't understand the pathos from him. Like, I didn't understand why DiCaprio, like, he felt bad, but he was also poisoning her. Like, did he yeah. not know he was? Right. No, I think he did. And I think, I think what Marty Martinsker says he was going for this, I think, was can someone love someone but also try and kill them? I think maybe that's what he was trying to answer, right? Because you're absolutely right. He mm -hmm. is doing something that, how could you love someone and have kids with someone and poison them yeah. every day? And every we see day. how Di DiCaprio reacts when he finds out his daughter died. Like that, like that was a great performance there. And then, and then just to see, you know, De Niro handle it. And, and it was like, that was such a good scene in that, in the prison and everything. Yeah. And, yeah. It was and man. Clemens was so good. Sorry. I, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but Clemens was, really good because you usually he's the dumbass and when he shows up at the door he it, he's he's still kind of portraying that dumbass uh character that he does so well um but then you realize as it goes on he's a lot smarter than smarter we than he looks yeah 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 he really and, is. He, and he's got this whole thing figured out yeah yep. um even though he's acting like he doesn't um right right yep clemens right like for like for a good half an hour, I was like, oh, the FBI is, they have no fucking clue what's going on. Right. And then all right. of a sudden you're like, oh, oh, no, no. They, they knew they were, they were playing Hale and, and, yep. uh, Burkhart as, uh, for fools. Fools. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so I want to push back on the, this should have been Molly's story. Mm -hmm. I can see where that criticism comes from, but here's the problem I have with it. If this was a Molly, if this was Molly's story, then that same person making that criticism would say, 
oh, well, Martin Scorsese as a white man shouldn't be directing the Indian or the Native American story, right? Yeah, that is, you know what? You're, you, I think you have something there. He's he's yeah. a white man, so he's going to yeah. tell it from a white man's perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think he did a good job by include. We get voiceover from her in this movie, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She's not just the third character, mm -hmm. and she is sidelined a bit at the end during the trial. But like you said, she's in the hospital. Um, yeah. And yeah. he had Osage consultants with him and go through the script with him. Um, yeah. So I think he did a. I think he did a good enough job here. You know as far as sensitivity goes to the Osage people. And, mm -hmm. and then there's, here's the other argument of why not. If, if um, an Osage person directed it, would they have been able to get Martin, would they have been able to get Leo and De Niro, you know, and would we have seen it? Right. Cause yeah. there's probably, yeah. a, there probably is a story about this, these murders out there, but you got the prestige of Apple and all these, and all these, big actors that'll yeah. get us to see it. And now we know about it. And now I want to read the book. You know, my mom just went out and rented the book um, from her library and my sister's curious about it too. So I think we got to take the good with the bad that yeah. him telling the story. And I thought it was, it's done, you know, it shows Leo and De Niro as bad people. They are mm -hmm. terrible, awful people. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't, it doesn't go easy on them, you know? Yeah. I mean, maybe a little on Leo, like, like you were saying, it, maybe it's a little easy on him, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I think for this to be, I think it should be told by some, an Osage person, but I think yeah. that would, that needs to be a different movie, you know? Yeah. You're, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. And um, there was some horror elements in this almost, you know, like I can think of, you know, just one scene in particular, I guess, but there's some really horrific things happening to these Osage people and uh it's it, it was i i could hear some shocks out of the elderly people you know mm -hmm. like oh oh like you know um like there's one scene where they you know the scene where they the girl gets shot through the head and then yeah yeah i guess or that whole... at the beginning the woman with the baby gets shot and they just walk right over her and pick up the baby you know yeah. they put the gun in her hand and pick the baby up um right. and you know I, I i got feelings of um of there will be blood a lot with this because this is a very yeah. an American greed story, you and, know. Because uh, sorry, no, you another, go ahead. Another Dan Lee, uh, Daniel, Daniel Day, Day Lewis, Lewis movie. Uh, I got a lot of Phantom Thread um, yeah. with the poisoning, with the poisoning and, the, yeah. and the stuff. Um, I, I meant to say that earlier, but sorry. Yes, I, I did get a lot with the oil. A lot of yeah, yeah, with the oil. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and just I think this the movie portrays uh, tragedy and sorrow so well. Um, I liked how the FBI brought in that uh, Native American guy, the guy with the braids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did the first I, time I saw this movie, I didn't realize he was part of it. I thought he was just another Osage oh. person. And well, the second I, it time, took me a, yeah. Sorry, I, I, it took me a while to realize. Like, I was like, I was like, this is really ham fisted. Like, they just, I thought, okay, you know what I thought when they brought him in? I thought he was gonna come. I thought Ernest was going to get away with it almost get away with everything and then this native american guy was going to come in and be like oh i'm a long lost family member you know and and then they can't kill him because the fbi is there and i thought he was going to be able to take all the money if molly died and oh. then you know i thought that's what and i was like this is really ham-fisted they got this guy come out of nowhere and and uh but then the way it went i was like oh, i got it I yeah, did. yeah, it was it was I a did. clever move by the FBI, right? You put in Jesse Plemons <laughs> with all those guys, then you drop this other guy over yeah. here, make him look like he's Native American, and maybe he was, um, and get you know the info from there. So there's a shot that I thought was awesome, cinematography wise. Mm -hmm. It's towards the end. It's when King Bill is lighting his farm on fire. Oh yeah, Leo and so first of all, the fire effects looked so cool by themselves yeah. but from leo's leo and molly's room from ernest and molly's room their windows it looks like they're in hell the fire outside makes the yeah. room look like it's hell and yeah. i and that was when leo tried the poison himself that was yeah. that, that was such a great shot and visual storytelling right it shows that these two characters are going through hell or about to go through hell everything's mm -hmm. crumbling around them you know um and i also thought there were some great laughs in this there was a few there was a couple yeah yes. there's some nice humor when de niro pulls up with those silly goggles on and he's like <laughs> go tell ac to do the and he's and de niro and uh leo's just staring at him like uh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like did you hear me son like i wish i wrote down the part that i i he I... goes look at me like you understand what i'm saying right <laughs> 
it was great. There was yes. there was like a few drops of humor throughout. So I I yeah I <clears throat> I'm five. I was five stars. I I'm I've knocked it back down to four and a half. Um, I'm gonna see it again when it comes out. I think near the end the movie kind of buckles under its own weight. Okay. Um, I I I did feel a little bit like near the around the interrogation and everything. This because the story definitely changes, and then the courtroom and uh, it takes a huge change and um. So, and that and I, I, I man like I just loved Molly and Lily, uh, Gladstone, and and I, I think you know what I did love is at the beginning, uh, De Niro says. You know these these Indians. And that's what he says. But he says, you know, these Indians. He they 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 don't talk much. You know, and you're gonna great. when you're sitting there, you're gonna you're gonna want to talk, to but don't talk. Just just they they are simple. Like they 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 take everything in and blah blah. blah. And then and then you get that with Molly. Like Molly is she sits there and she takes it all in and and. And every word she says, like, I just was so, I was hanging on every word because yeah. I just loved her. And, and that set up from De Niro, I thought was so good. And, oh man, I just, yeah. And apparently De Niro did paddle, um, DiCaprio, but he, DiCaprio was wearing some butt pads. Apparently. Yeah. That was a funny scene. Yeah. Um, and there was some great one takes, you know, very Scorsese one takes, similar to the Goodfellas entering the restaurant uh, restaurant shot where he goes through into and through the house. And there's yeah. one where when Lily Gladstone's going to see that her sister has been shot and killed, oh. all the people turning to face her, right? We're the camera yes. POV and they're all turning and they're all just like, oh, no, sorry, you know. Um, and, oh, my God. Yeah, that scene when she's going down the ravine. Yes. And, and yes, yeah, sorry. You're kind of bringing things up that I almost, you know, you've seen it twice. Right, I, and, I have the advantage of seeing it twice. Yeah. yeah, you're bringing things up where I'm like, wow, I almost forgot about that, and it's that's an amazing moment. But uh, yeah, and it was cool. I think the 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 way they deployed the use of the Native American language was done well. I think it's cool that De Niro and Ernest learned plenty of it and used it a lot because they mm -hmm. would have living with mm -hmm. them, you know, living with them and trying to get in with them. And then, you know, there's lots of other things, too, that show just how insidious this is. Yeah. So they have the Native Americans have all this money, but they have to go to a guy and request it. Remember? Oh, that made like, me so angry oh so many God. times. I was like, why can't these Native American people just get their fucking money? Yeah, it's why are they going to ask some fat white guy like this? Oh, and man, did you catch I was... and did you catch that fat white guy was in the KKK? Was he? Yes, he was. That was a people... really interesting scene for people who haven't seen this they there there's a parade going through town and Ernest uh just kind of walks by the parade and it's literally the KKK just walking through town and we do see a little bit of the KKK on the TV uh yep. earlier it, it's subtle yeah was it the TV was there TVs in 1920 no i don't think i saw any TVs in this I don't know what he was watching then, or maybe he was reading the paper, but there was something about, because uh, Hale was really interested in, um, in the KKK and, and uh, yeah, anyways, this is a, uh, this is a really good movie. Um, I'm yeah. Probably... And then that fat, that same fact, I was also then on the jury. Yeah. Which, yes, I did notice that. Which I did like, notice that. So I he's noticed... in charge of their money. He's yeah. in the KKK. And yeah. he gets to be on the jury that decides the fate. It's just so it's like the whole that that's a that's a mm -hmm. thing I think they put into the show. The whole system's rigged. The whole system is yeah. set up against to extract from these people. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I liked it a lot, man. It's 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 a long movie. It's a drama. It's sad. Yeah. It's heavy. It's epic. But I think it's good. I think it's important. And yeah, I gave I it four and a half stars. I really, really. Yeah, really I'm at it. four and a half. I, I could probably go to five. It, it it has a good shot of being in my top ten for sure. Um, fuck, there was one more thing I was gonna say, but yeah, let me just look at the notes. I have good one takes. Um, oh, there was one scene. If you want to think of your last thought, there was one mm. scene that I think was good to illustrate the um, the rottenness of racism. So we're at the house. The mm. 
mom, the Indian mom, the, the mom of Molly and the other sisters. Yes, yes, yes. She yes. says she's mad at her and she's like, you're not my favorite. You marrying these white men, right? So yeah. she doesn't like the white people, right? Which yeah. that's not good either, right? That shows that she's racist against them because but of the I think color. she had a little bit of reason to, she but does. Also, also not. Like she didn't really know everything. But right, sorry. right. And but so, you know, and yeah, like that might be justified from her perspective. But I think it was on purpose in that same scene that right after that part, we then cut to the two family members at the table, uh, not family members, but just two people at the dinner table. And remember, they're like, oh, look at those poor kids. One of them's oh, yeah. one of them's Indian and one of them's American, yeah. a stupid half breed. They don't even know it. And the, the woman's like, oh, come on, they're just children. And he's like, Psh, whatever. So it, that's yeah. two extremes of the white people being racist against them and then the natives being racist against white people. I think that was shown on purpose just to show how bad yeah. it can be if we don't, you know, uh, confront our prejudices, prejudices. Yeah. So, yeah. No, and, and I did remember my other point. I was just going to say, I, I was so body like, uh, top five relationships you actually cared about in a movie. I cared about Ernest and Molly. I, I was like, hoping to god that things would work out i was hoping that Ernest wasn't actually poisoning her too, or, or was too. maybe just so stupid that he didn't know or or didn't realize and and so like i was kind of heartbroken with the dana ma and and everything because i was i don't know like even that scene where they get it they both get out of the cars and they both walked we each other and, and yeah and, the and she embraces him i was like i was like why am i rooting for them for Ernest. Like, right, he, I know, right. He's, he's a piece of shit. I don't know. I I I was rooting for them as a couple, which yeah. was, you know, maybe maybe wrong because he was such a piece of shit. But Yeah, no, I was too, man. And and like all the way up until the poison part, he could almost be like, oh, he still helped in killing her family, but you know, he <laughs> loved he loves his wife. Yeah. But it's like, no, he knows what he's doing. And it was he, odd. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. That's Killers of Anyways, the Flower Moon. Thank you, everyone, for listening to that uh, long, long, but, you know, it was one, it's one of those big ones we really needed to get through, I think. And uh, yeah, definitely. It's important. So, definitely. Um, I'm going to talk about something really short. Um, and it is, it is a short. Uh, Once Upon a Studio. Uh, I don't know if anybody has seen this yet. It is on Disney Plus. It is a hundred... oh yeah, yeah, tell me about this the hundred year thing. Yeah, it's uh, the hundred year anniversary, and uh, it's really simple. Basically, we're in Walt Disney Studios somewhere, and in, in Burbank, California, and uh, the employees are leaving at the animation studios, and there's an old man and a young girl, and 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 they say. Uh, Barry, the one guy is Bernie Mattinson, and he says, like, oh, man, if these walls could talk, and then he leaves. Well, and then, so all the pictures, the all of our favorite animated characters from the last 100 years of Disney animation start coming out of the pictures. And um, this is less of a, of a look at all the people we own, like all the different characters we own, and more of a look at all the characters like we've created and we love like and i watched this three times i watched it with i watched it by myself and then i showed my kids and then john hadn't seen it so i showed him um i teared yeah. up every time uh it's 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 only like not even 15 minutes and it's okay. it's really beautiful uh, it's really cute um you will see disney characters that you thought disney forgot about um and uh it's 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 really cool there's some really fun moments and definitely show your kids um <clears throat> they have a lot of archival recordings um like um peter pan and ursula and like you know uh and then of course robin williams uh shows up as the genie oh nice um and they got you know his family's permission yeah um so you know they they use a lot of archival stuff to 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 give us some of our favorite characters and, and it's not Pixar. There's no Pixar. This is all just 
Disney animation. Disney animation. Um, they have a little cameo from the upcoming movie Wish because that comes out this year. So yeah. it's in the hundred years. So which I was like, okay, that's cool. Hopefully that movie's good. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's all I wanted to say. Uh it's short, but it's uh <laughs> It's really cute. It's beautiful, and uh, I I deny you to have your 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 heart warmed by this. Uh, so yeah, so it pumps the nostalgia. Um, oh yeah, but serum, but in a good way. In, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. That's fine. you know, like in a way where you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. You know what? That's that was. This is everyone's childhood. Hundred years, like you could sit down with anyone, and they're like, oh my god, I love bed knobs and broom sticks, or I love Frozen. Right? There's everything so yeah uh, so definitely just check it out it's on disney plus like and uh it'll it'll warm your heart so all right cool all right so uh, did you log it and did you rate it or <laughs> i logged it all three times and i gave it five stars <laughs> yeah okay okay uh i five starred that shit but um just because what else am i gonna give it you That's know fine. it yeah. made me happy i need to hear about dicks the musical Please, I know you have other things, but I need to know what this is. Okay. I need to know if you liked it. Yeah, let's talk Dicks the Musical. So this, surprising to me, is an A24 movie. At least they're distributing it. No, I think they, I think they, no, they bought it. I think they bought it. Okay. Okay, Dicks the Musical, 2023. Um, music, it's kind of a, I guess it is a musical technically, but there is some, it's not a full blown musical. There are some dialogue scenes in between. Okay. All right. It has Josh Sharp and Aaron Jackson. They are the two leads who I didn't recognize from anything. They might've done some small right. TV stuff, but this is a big debut for them. It's 80 okay. minutes, 88 minutes. It was very short. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It has Nathan Lane, Me uh, Megan Mullaney, Bowen Yang, Megan the Stallion, uh -huh. um, Tom Kenny. And that's about it. As far as names you might've heard of. Oh, Nick Offerman has a small part in it too. Of course, he's married to uh, Megan Mullally. So. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the gayest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> gay as hell. It's and gay. last year we had Bros and Fire Island. Yeah, this is, well, all right, so it's close to Bros. Okay. Yeah, like Bros and this are neck and neck. But this is okay. so different from Bros. All right, Yeah. it is a full-blown comedy. This is supposed okay. to be funny. Um, the story is this. Oh, well, actually, let me talk about the director first. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was thinking of something else. Well, this is important too. Uh, Larry Charles, the director, the director of Borat, The Dictator, Bruno. Right. And uh, The Army of One with Nick Cage and Russell Brand. Okay. Haven't seen that one. Oh, and also Religious. So, so he's got some good comedy pedigree, this yes, guy, Larry yeah. Charles, right? Because Borat was great. Bruno was kind of funny, and that's about it for these. Um, I did, well, The Dictator had some moments, but anyway, Borat was awesome right so here's the here's the plot line two self-obsessed businessmen discover their long lost identical twins and come together to plot the reunion of their eccentric divorced parents so this is basically the parent trap right they they okay. are yeah they find out well and it's so funny if you look at the poster or look these two people up they look nothing alike but the movie starts out in song saying Yes, we're identical twins. And they look at each other. Yes, we're definitely identical twins. So oh they're telling gosh. the audience that, hey, we are identical twins, right? All right. So um, I have to tell you, there is a song in this movie. I think I texted it to you. I'm going to say a canceled word, but it's in this movie. There is a song titled God is a faggot and love is love. And it's very catchy too. Like I'm walking out of the, I'm walking out of the theater humming this song. Really? Yes, yes. And huh. they do some outrageous stuff in this. So like just, too outrageous, right? Really, they go really far. And I think I've said on here before. I think I can't be offended no matter what by anything. I just mm -hmm. can't. Nothing you could say or call me would really ever offend me. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool. I'm cool with anything. And and I kind of like my buttons being pushed, see how far I can take handle, yeah. you know? Yeah. But this is like as vulgar as it gets. They're talking about, you know, fluids and vaginas, penises, everything in between, all kinds of sex. Um, they show some funny sex on screen. Um, and yeah, the story is, these two guys come out as these hotshot salesmen and they, you know, the movie opens with them with 
one girl sitting on his face, the other one riding his lap. And, you know, oh God. Uh, they have ex- eccentric apartments with TVs that rise out of the floor. And just they're, you know, they're your typical sales CEO douchebags in New York. Yeah, uh, their yeah. companies are merging. So now they are competing for who's the top salesman of the new company that merged together of the two companies. Oh, then they learn man. that they're identical twins. Then they find out that the one twin never met the dad. The other twin never met the mom. So they switch and go to the other twins homes oh my god and the parents pretend they and and it's like oh my god this is my son but yes obviously... the parents are like hi son how are I? but they obviously look totally different <laughs> um there's lots of meta in this where the mom so like the kid goes to the mom's house and the mom goes why are you wearing such that silly wig you know mm. because it's an obvious bad wig oh on gosh. this guy um so okay i didn't like that they lip synced in this I, mm. I really I really wish that if you're going to have music and singing in your movie, have your actor sing, right? That's yeah. the job of an actor. If you can't sing, you got to get someone else. Just like in a movie, if you can't yeah. cry, you're not – then, you, then yeah, you're not you a good actor. Be... You sure? Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's why I think acting is so hard. I couldn't do it. I can't yeah. sing, and I can't yeah. cry in command. So I'm not an actor. That's why I admire that position. So that was one thing. Um, it was funny. The Megan The Stallion song – She's their boss of this new company, right? Okay. I saw um, her with the dogs. Yeah, she has the dogs on the leashes like Corella DeVille. Yeah. And she's shaking her ass twerking. And her her song's pretty funny. But her her song and her style of music doesn't really fit in this style. Because mm-hmm. they're doing like Broadway show tunes type singing. And she comes in with like a hardcore rap. Oh, okay. But didn't really Lego click in. Um, but... Um, the other thing that's good or that I liked a lot, the costumes were really inspired. I thought the ones they wear when they're the sales dicks are like really good and exactly what these guys would wear. And they talk about how they do cocaine all the time off strippers tits. And, you know, it's, it's just wild. And then Nathan Lane, their dad has these, well, I don't want to give this away. He has some weird pets Mm. in, and they're played by puppets and they are, extremely hard to look at they are like hideous looking things wearing diapers and they're in cages and it the story behind them is so wild okay um, so i will watch this when it comes out yeah um, you should with it being only 80 something minutes yeah um but just be prepared that they might say some stuff that will offend you uh or or try to offend you just go into it with a, a good you know a good feeling or a good, yeah. uh, a good, yeah. In a good mood. Cause what'd you give it? I give it three stars. It's like okay. just good enough. And it's you just, laughed. Yeah. I laughed a handful of times and okay. it's just weird enough to, to, to be given a positive review because they took this shot. Um, yeah. Like dog's you said, taking a, the dog's taking a shit on your couch. No, he's not. Okay, good. Oh I'm my kidding. God. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> I had to do um, that. Yeah, and then this was the movie where there was someone outside the theater asking for everyone's opinions as you walked out. Um, yeah. And I just said it was funny and walked on because – but then I, like, tracked back and was like, hey, wait, how do you get this job? This sounds like a cool job to do. But, yeah, so that's Dick, Dick's the Musical. It's very, very weird and, um, yeah, super offensive. It's it's trying to it's trying to offend you, but it's it's funny. It's funny enough. If you're, yeah. if you're gay or LGBT friendly, I think you might like this. I'm not. Um... <laughs> All right, so what's next? Dudes, uh, my friends, everyone listening, I have not really seen anything new, but I've been watching a lot of horror. And I am, so I'm going to. That's all right. We don't have to review new movies every time. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of like throw some at you guys. Um, I think my biggest recommend is 28 28 Weeks Later. It is the sequel to 28 Days Later. Um, And. I have avoided this for 16 years since it came out in 2007 uh, just because I love the first one so much Um, (laughs) because I love the first one so much. This movie is great. This movie is so much fun, fun, like horror. Like it's, it's, uh, it does different things that you haven't really seen in apocalypse type movies. Like, the first movie basically has the world ending and this movie kind of walks it all back and the world's like getting back on its feet, you know, and then they've got all these things in place. Jeremy Renner is basically playing Hawkeye in this, um, but with a gun and he's like on a roof. 
Uh, you got Imogen Poots. She's just beautiful. Rose Byrne in one of her first roles. God, Idris Elba. Really? I forgot. I, I, yeah. Um, is, um, is, is Renner, is anyone related to the dad? The kids. Who's the kids? Are the kids? Is so Imogen the kids Poots one of the are kids? Imogen Poots and Mac Macintosh Muggleton. Okay. And the dad is Robert Carlyle. Have you seen this movie? I have, but it's been a long time. I remember really liking it. This movie, I'm not even going to spoil it, but this movie opens with one oh of my the gosh. most heart wrenching openings. And I posted about it in a group, and and a couple of people just said like, "Dude, that opening!" And I was like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It's um." And and where it leads, this movie is really great. It's not it's not like the first one in a lot of ways. Um, so I think it disappointed a lot of people. But this yeah, is a, yeah, this is a really good movie. And uh, I just I think if you like horror movies, you don't have to have seen the first one either. No, nope. Um, just throw this one on. It's a great zombie movie. And yep. uh, and. I don't know. I I have trouble finding those great zombie movies anymore. I think Agreed. Walking Dead and everything just kind of did it in for me, right? And um, so that one, um, there's another one called Near Dark. Um, this is a vampire movie directed by Catherine Bigelow, who did Zero Dark Thirty and yeah. uh, Detroit from yep. a few years ago. I like Detroit um, a lot. This is a really interesting movie. Uh, it's I do, it's not for everyone. It's really uh like it's it's really gritty, it's really dark. Um and uh and so the most interesting thing about this movie is this is this movie was made when Catherine Bigelow and James Cameron were uh just starting their relationship. This was made um in the year nineteen eighty seven. Aliens came out in nineteen eighty six, right? Aliens I think eighty six. Wow, I didn't know that Catherine Bigelow has been making movies that long. I know, I didn't, I, I didn't realize how old this movie was. So, um, Aliens came out in 1986, uh, Near Dark was kind of being made, and and so James Cameron says to Catherine Bigelow, the director, hey, I've got like several actors who are ready to go, why don't you put them in your movie? So he put Bill Paxton... Lance Henri Henriksen and Jeanette Goldstein, all from Aliens. You'll recognize all cool. three of them. What was and this called again? I missed the title. Sorry, this is called Near Dark, and it's okay. like a vampire horror western. Um, and mm. uh, it's 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 very indie, um, but it's very good. And and uh, I liked it, and I liked where it ultimately went in the end. Some really interesting stuff with vampires. Um, and yeah, so, uh, that's a really good one. Uh, some good stuff in there. Uh, okay. especially if you, you know, Catherine Bigelow is one of our greatest working directors, you know, she's, she's done, uh, Hurt Locker. Yeah. Um, and just one more, I'm just gonna, and I will, I do have more later for in between your movies, but, um, <laughs> What was I gonna say? Oh, I rewatched Dracula. Oh, Bram 19... Stoker's Dead Dracula from 1992. Oh, okay, okay. So I watched this movie for the first time last year. This is directed by Francis Ford Coppola, who directed yeah. got you know the Godfather movies, uh, among others. And uh, anyway, so the reason I watched this is because I just started reading um, Dracula the uh the bram stoker novel. that's right yeah 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 i was kind of telling you asking you if you you know if you uh read books and this this is a long book uh it was written the in the 1890s um anyways the book is great um i'm loving the book it's very long it's it's a little dry which is you know is okay i can kind of like um Reading the book has made me hate Francis Ford Coppola's Dra Dracula. <laughs> Bram. Yeah, I, I know it's controversial that movie. It's I hate it. I I I last year I gave this movie five stars. I'm almost done this book, and I tried to watch this movie. I turned it off before it was over. Oh, that's funny. They make I hate it. I just like it. it it's so wildly different from the book, and the book is beautiful. 
Abraham Van Helsing is one of the best characters ever written on the page, ever written. He's he's a wonderful man, and he's interesting in this as well. And and Gary Oldman and Anthony Hopkins are great. Winona yeah. Ryder is a great Mina Harker. Um, Keanu Reeves is a horrible Jonathan Harker. Yeah, I've Fuck. seen clips. I actually haven't seen this movie, but I know of it. And yeah, I know he's bad in it. So, anyways, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, either if you like Bram Stoker's Dracula the movie, don't read the book. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Um, if you, yeah, but uh, yeah, I do recommend the book. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. Okay. Tell me about Nyad. Uh, this is the Jodie Foster and Nett Benning swimming movie. Yeah, yeah. So this is directed by Jimmy Chen and um, Elizabeth Chai Varhesky or Heli. I can't, I can't remember okay. how to pronounce her name. But the same guys that did Free Solo, that amazing documentary. And also, oh, what was it I said earlier? The, the Rescue. The, the Rescue, another amazing documentary. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this, is, this is documentary adjacent. But it is a narrative yeah. because it has Jodie Foster and Annette Benning. So this is the remarkable true story of uh, athlete Diana Nyad, who at the age of 60, she was 60 years old, and the help of her best friend and coach commits to achieving her lifelong dream, a 110-mile open ocean swim from Cuba to Florida. Wow. They this this swimming distance takes 52 hours straight without stopping and without touching the boat that is following her to make sure she doesn't die. Wow. The story is really inspiring. And this movie almost brought me to tears several times. I mean, it was I was wow. very close. I was very emotionally in by this. So and are they a gay couple? So no, they're not. Oh, okay, okay. But no, but it's good to ask that because obviously Jodie Foster's gay in real life, and if you look mm-hmm. at this poster, um, they or actually if you look at the trailer, they look like they're a gay couple. They really do. Um, they're you know they're in their sixties. The way they're presented, they just they look like they're a gay couple. But they're really just best friends. In the movie, you find out they dated one time or hooked up once when they were younger. You know, I have friends like that that we hooked up once, but we realize we're better friends than dating material right um but this story like actually the, that wedding i went to last weekend my friend Breton, her and i same thing like we're be- we've been best friends forever but of course like one time we hooked up when we were drunk and stupid and a kid you, you we and kids. brett <laughs> yeah brett <laughs> <laughs> Breton. Breton. oh okay yes okay um all right so jody foster and annette benning are so good in this man they have a scene where they are in an argument in the kitchen and they're just both so 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 good um which is no surprise these are some of our best actresses at the moment um i love that this movie have you heard the term warts and all yeah yeah actually i think i heard the film vault mention that this shows us that with this with diana nyad she's not that likable of a person she talks about herself the whole time she talks about how great she is and she was an olympic swimmer up until 28 years old and she tried this at 28 years old and failed she had to get pulled out of the water halfway through she had done the english channel she had swam around manhattan she'd done other accomplishments but she failed at this and when she's six, her 60th birthday, she realizes, I got to I got to do something. I'm not happy in life. So as a 61 year old woman, she tr- she goes and accomplishes this. It takes many tries. There's lots of tribulations with jellyfish, sharks, you know, how to swim at night and not go off track. Currents that run between the s- southern tip of Florida and Cuba. It's a real, real project. And it takes a team. It's not just her and the coach. You got a navigator, you got a weather guy, you got a captain, you've got people in the water looking for sharks, electrifying things in the water in case sharks get near them. Um, wow. It's very, very intense, but it's a, it's a such an inspiring story. It just, I love it to see what humans can accomplish. You know, this is all a mental thing. Like, when it, when you go those kind of distances, long distance runners, you know, triathlon people, it's it's totally mental. And the way the the things she does while swimming to help keep her mind active while swimming is really clever. I'm not going to spoil it, but okay. she has methods, songs, and ways she'll count to, like you know, she'll say like, if I do this uh, 640 times, then I know I've made the distance. It's like, oh my god, you're going to do that yeah. in your head that many times. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, so it was it was it was just it was great. And their relationship, their friendship is the emotional anchor to this movie. It does yeah. a great job of building up their friendship and explaining its backstory or else you wouldn't care that much. Right. Um, so they, they do, they do that. There's some cool editing in this where when she's about to jump into the water, we actually see a shot of the actual um, athlete doing it. Yeah. I was going to say the, the trailer was kind of playing here on IMDb when I was just looking it up and yeah. I saw some archival footage. Yep. Um, it, it, they, they splice in some archival footage, which I thought was a nice touch. I heard one critic complain about it, but I, I actually liked that. I thought that was cool. Um, yeah. There's a, also, there's some nice light humor dropped in in places to kind of break the seriousness of what they're trying to do here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just very, very, very good. I, I, I definitely recommend it. This is a four star movie. Um, if you're feeling be, down, this will be streaming next week on Netflix. So sweet. Uh, perfect. perfect. November 3rd, this, uh, this, this drops on Netflix. So I will, I will definitely be watching it. Yeah. Nyad. It's very, very good. It's just N-Y-A-D. A, an awesome story. Yep. NYAD. It's a very inspirational story. And if you like stuff like free solo or the rescue, you would love this. This is just That's so awesome. cool. It's so cool that it's a true story. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, we hear so many bad things. It's nice to see the good things that humans can do. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. Four stars. Um, what do you got next? I'm just going to talk about a couple little things. The Bride of Frankenstein. I watched the Bride of Frankenstein. This is, I think the Bride of Frankenstein is better than the original uh, Frankenstein from 1933. Bride of Frankenstein is from 35. Um, there's a lot of humor in there. There's a lot of heart in this one. Um, he meets a, he meets a blind man in this, in this one. Right. And everyone's scared of Frankenstein, right? What He's, year is this one? 1935 oh right okay and everyone's scared of him and uh and so he he's going through the woods and he meets like a blind man and this blind man is wants a friend too and and it's just what happens is just really really nice um so that's a good that's a really good movie now the one i want to talk about is lake mungo yeah uh this is a 2008 australian psychological horror uh it, it's 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 mockumentary uh found footage um there's fake uh you know interviews going on and essentially the movie starts with a girl named alice palmer she drowns uh while swimming with her family in australia she's 16 years old um and then we and then we start to find out that there's maybe a ghost or you know people uh there's something going on in the house like and and it's a lot like uh paranormal activity okay um, before there was paranormal wait what year did paranormal activity 2006 2010 okay 2007 so this came out they came out like within a year of each other um and i think this is as good or better than most of the paranormal activities um, but is this found footage style? It's found footage. It, but it, it, it's like documentary, and then in between the documentary, it's showing you footage of like cameras being set up and stuff. Okay, okay. And there's a lot of really creepy imagery in this. Um, I gave it three and a half. I think like your mileage will vary. I think I, I think if like you sat down and watched this like, you know, dark room like you and a couple friends or whatever, and you. I, this is really creepy. It's a creepy movie, and uh, it's it's a mystery too. You're finding things out as it goes along, and uh, and you find out there might be something shifty going on. But there's also we don't know all the answers to everything. Uh, this is a creepy one. So uh, mm, okay, yeah, I yeah. Seen so this one. I don't know, uh, Jack Fitzpatrick. If you're listening, if you uh, let me know if you've seen this one. He's Austra- He's from Australia. He's friend of mine and uh jordan so jordan peele said this is one of the movies that scared him the most oh really yeah i can like this, yeah that's i think that's one of the reasons i put this on my 31 days of horror um this is fucking scary and the way they will just like they'll show you this image right and then they'll just zoom in on a face you didn't realize was in the video. Ooh, that's creepy. And and it just keeps zooming in. And and I'm like, okay, stop. You're creeping me out. Like, 
uh, so this is really interesting. I think this is one ever uh, you should check out if you're looking for something different and creepy. Okay, so, cool. Um, and then just quickly, because I know you're going to talk about Foe and then we're done. Yeah. Um, but uh, I watched uh, Bronson. I will be talking oh, yeah. about that on the Film Vultures uh, this week. Um, it is about a man sentenced to seven years in prison and then ends up spending 30 years in solitary confinement. Uh, his That's name sure. is Charles, Charles Bronson, uh, and it's dire- directed by Nicholas Winding Refn in, from 2008. Um, this movie is... Uh... Sorry. Yeah, it has Tom Hardy in it, too. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. So this is Tom Hardy, probably the best role I've ever seen Tom Hardy in. Whoa. In, yeah, like I know that's crazy to say, but he's incredible in this. Um, I don't usually talk about what I'm rating on the film vultures over here, but this one is like really interesting. Um, it's I wouldn't recommend this to your mom or my mom, but your dad and my dad are going to love this. Like, you know what I mean? And, and yeah, you're going to yeah. like this. I know. I want to see it. I love Nicholas Winning Refn. So he's better than The Revenant or or Mad Max? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Like, like he should have won an Oscar for this. Um, it's it's cool. It's okay. nuts. And it's only 92 minutes. Um, and uh, it was on Prime for me. Uh, it's... Um, it's very violent. So if if you don't like the violence, uh, it is very violent. But uh, I I think it's a I, I at first I was like oh fuck I, I can't I can't take all this fighting. But then it just becomes like I just got lost in the artistry of it all. Like Winding Refn really did a great job. So yeah, uh, that's one of the things he's the best. He's yeah like excels at is you how really beautiful s- it looks. Yeah, you really see inside the mind of a deranged man uh, and the tension and, and everything. So, uh, very good. Very good. So, cool. uh, okay. yeah. So, let's hear about Foe, and then we'll uh, finish up. Then here. we'll wrap up. All right, yeah. So, Foe, 2023 movie, um, went to, uh, debuted at some of the film festivals and unfortunately got bad reviews. And I was so bummed by this because we're coming off of um, – Paul Mescal, who is in this. After Sun. Yeah, we're coming off After Sun and The Lost Daughter. Remember, he had a small part in The Lost did Daughter. He? Oh, I did. Yeah, like yeah, he was. Oh, I did. I did. Uh, I think oh. we talked about it before. I think we did. Maybe. But okay, so it's called Foe, like friend or foe, I guess. Um, it stars Sor- uh, Saoirse Ronan and Paul Mescal. Um, also, Aaron Pierre, who I don't know the name, but you know him as Mid Size Sedan from. <laughs> John Milan's yeah. movie old. Yeah, he's 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 in this. So here's the plot line. Henrietta and Junior farm a secluded piece of land that has been in Junior's family for generations. But their quiet life is thrown into turmoil when an uninvited stranger shows up at their door with a startling proposal. <laughs> um, <laughs> this this is a Black Mirror episode. There's a Black Mirror episode just like this. And I kind of want to spoil this for you, Mitch, because I feel like you knowing the end is better even if you're going to want to watch this but i haven't seen black mirror well no i just i think for i think i want to tell the people that don't care and you the ending unless were you planning to watch this i don't know if i'm gonna watch this i mean i love sersha and i'd like to see paul but yeah okay we're gonna get into spoilers for uh foe i guess yeah i'm gonna just Um, give i'm gonna give away the ending just because i I would have rather known this going in before we get into spoilers, why don't you just tell us your rating, what you gave it? Ultimately? So I gave it two and a half stars. I really okay. wanted this to work because I like these two actors so much. Yeah. Um, it takes place in 2065, which is actually the same year oh. that the creator took place. I did not even know it was like a futuristic. Yeah. So the story is like this, and this is non-spoiler still. I'll, I'll mention yeah. spoiler before I spoil it. The is story it like is like after Yang futuristic. Yeah, kind of. Well, yeah and so here so yeah here's the here's the story these two live on a farm in america america's destroyed now you can't grow shit people are dead everywhere famine happened but they live on this farm in the middle of nowhere just because his family has lived there for generations this guy shows up at the front door and says hey i've got good news you're gonna go up to the spaceship kind of like in the creator up above earth for you've been selected it's like a draft but we don't want to send you up there 
and leave your wife here by herself. So we're going to replace you with a clone of yourself. So I need to interview you, ask you questions, learn about you. And we're going to put the clone in the house to stay with Sir Ronan while you're gone, which, you know, could she not be on her own? Could she not a little go... bit like dual, but like, I mean, yeah, dual. So dual, I thought of dual. And I also yeah. thought of, um, the host that Sir Ronan was in, which I think was, was not very good. Oh yeah. I don't even remember, remember that as an old, but, old movie. Yeah. Um, but here's okay so here's the spoiler and you can you can figure this out. i figured this out pretty early the spoiler is the clone is already there it's really paul mescal is coming home from the ship but they've got to trick the clone into thinking he's going up so that when they turn him off he won't notice and the and the real paul mescal oh, will be coming home okay. so that's but but you don't find that out until the very end and what's what the problem with the movie is we need to care about Paul Mescal and Saoirse Ronan Hen and Junior's relationship before this new person, this new clone or the guy comes back. But they don't like they don't seem to like each other. We're never shown they're enjoying each other's company. The honeymoon phase. They are just constantly butting heads. She he doesn't like when she plays the piano. You know, they they fight all the time. They sleep in mm. different rooms. They have no you know, there's no pets. Does she no know it's a clone? She does. She does, but she pretends like she doesn't oh. know, right? But and 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 this is more spoiler. So when the real one comes back, she realizes, oh no, I've fallen in love with the clone. What? Yeah, and and then so get so what they do is they make huh. a clone of Sersha, so that she, so Sir the real Sersha Ronan leaves him, and they put a clone in for her so that the real. Paul Mescal can now live with the clone Sersha and they'll both be happy because she's away from him and Paul Mescal, who wants to stay on this farm forever. Um, so it just didn't work because their relationship isn't healthy at any moment. So these people shouldn't be together anyway. So yeah. I didn't want to see them come together. Another thing that bothered me or I noticed was this is supposed to be 2065, yet they have record players, tape players. They're listening to 80s music. So 2065, that'd be like us listening to 1920s music. It yeah. makes no goddamn sense. Yeah. Um, I and... really hate that's you were talking about one thing. Sorry, continue and I'll finish. No, you go first. You were talking about like how you hate when people are brushing their teeth in movies and <laughs> yes. they don't have tooth toothpaste on the on the toothbrush. Yep. One thing I hate in movie movies where they take place in the future is when like the main character is always obsessed with with old things. Right. Like right. it's like um i can't remember what it was but they're but they're always obsessed with like look i got these adidas from the 90s or from the 2000s and they're like and there's always someone like oh man you're you're whack like this yeah. new stuff is the way it is and i yeah so no uh, yeah sorry. 2065 would they be listening to 1980s music no way and they have like a landline phone and they don't have cell phones and we're supposed to think that Every it just all doesn't fit. We're supposed to think that this is a sparse town, middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, somewhere in the great plains of emptiness. Yeah. But Mescal works at a chicken farm with 50 or 60 other people we see. She works at a diner that's full every time we see it. So it's like, well, where are these people? Why do they live? Why are they talking about how there's nobody around? There's tons of we see tons of other people. So yeah, it just doesn't work. There's some cool technology stuff, the car that the government agent drives up in to talk about the, the switch of the clone is cool that that's a cool futuristic design and oh man the thing that tripped me up the most their accents slip a couple times in this movie just do another take you know she has a, a crazy irish accent right yeah i seen and that she, video the other day she, yes, i love her I'm in love i do with too her. and i've seen i've seen that clip but her I accent slips and it's like oh my god just do another take and then yeah. him he has a super british accent i think right yeah, I can't. Yeah, he does. Yes. Yeah, because British, I, I right? remember interviews with the daughter from After Sun. Yeah. And um, man, they're, they're, their accent slips and they're supposed to be playing American. So it's like, come on, just do another take. So I was yeah. really bummed that this didn't work. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it just sucks. It's just a, it's a strikeout. Um, yeah. Oh, but, That's you know, did bad. I did I say the director here? No, I didn't. This is directed by Garth Davis, who directed Lion. Did you see Lion? I liked Lion a lot. I loved Lion. Remember little yeah. Gadoo? Yes, yes. Little Gadoo. He's the one oh that gets... Oh my gosh, he needs... Why haven't we seen him again? Yeah, Dev Patel? Yeah. 
No, yeah. little Gadu, like the, oh, the young Gadoo. actor. I gotta, yeah. <laughs> he was so cute, man. My my good friend Akil is Indian, or yeah, Indian Indian, and uh, I always like to call him Gadu just to to joke around oh, with him. That's or awesome. he or he'll text me and be like, "Where's little Gadu?" You know, because he was the cutest little kid. Yeah. yeah. Um. But but yeah. So so with this pedigree of guy that directed Lion, these two people, I thought it would be good. Yeah. It just isn't. It's like in the twenties on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a little low. Um. I ended up giving it. Two and a half stars. Yeah. So, so like you didn't hate it. You didn't no, hate your time. It just doesn't but, work. But in two years, you won't really remember it. No, no. It's a, <laughs> it's a swing and a miss. It's only 100, 110 yeah. minutes. So it's not even two hours. But yeah, it just didn't work. Bummer. That's faux. Let's move on and close this out. Yeah. Um, and like I said, we are going to be back very soon and we're going to have reviews of Five Nights at Freddy's, Anatomy of a Fall and the killer um and and you and i will have both seen both of those um and then we are doing our patreon episode no so, i won't we have seen all three of them uh, sorry i meant all three I, okay um and then i just need to know like you went into under the skin in theaters i'm sorry yeah, i yeah. love that it's one of my like probably top 20 movies of all Same. time i think it's one of the best of the 21st century seeing it in the yeah. theater was Had, oh so you'd seen it before I'd seen it once at home. Okay, me too. Yeah, I love that score. I mean, it's just all so, so, so good. Yeah. So good. And and yeah. that's a movie with not much dialogue. Scarlett doesn't okay. say much in that movie, you know? No. And it's so... And that's another one. Like, it shows that she ends up... Bec- she, like, leaves her alien feelings behind and learns humanity. You know, this is an old movie. Yeah. People, if they haven't seen it. So, yeah, it Even was great. Even so, you're not really spoiling it. I think it's one of those... It's a lot like Killers it's of the, the Flower Moon almost. It's about the Weird. journey, not the destination. You just, yeah, you just let it wash over you. Like, that scene on the beach, I'll never forget. Oh, my scene, God. The scene where she, like, picks up the guy with the... With, who's The form face. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, he's, like, really like that in real life. I read yes. his whole, a whole interview with him. That movie is incredible. Um, that is from director Jonathan Glazer. It comes out. Uh, his new movie comes out this year. Yeah, uh, Zone yeah. of Interest. Yeah, looking um, forward to it. So, yeah, anyways, so I just wanted to. I didn't yeah, know you'd no, seen it before. I but. had, I had, I had. Yeah, so it was great yeah. to see you again in theater. Drag me to hell. I ended up not liking, um, because that main actress Amanda Lohman cannot walk through a door convincingly. I mean that. <laughs> woman cannot act holy shit is she bad she was really really bad and i feel bad but i don't because she's a pretty white woman so she'll be just fine but um allison I lo- loman allison sorry allison loman yeah um she was just not good although there was some sam raimi touches i liked it was yep. there was a lot of humor i liked i loved the ending i love how it ended yep, that was me great too. me too but, man she's just bad so yeah that was drag me to hell um i like drag me to hell on later viewings i okay. was kind of like you know what i mean i watched it like three years later or four or five years later and just really enjoyed myself but i get where where you're at like yeah but. yeah yeah so that was that one um the effects the effects have aged a little bit um the goat and then the table oh i don't think God. she did anything wrong to that woman to deserve being cursed like she, she'd already missed her mortgage payment twice she can't you know it's they're very bent. it's very evil dead very early yes. evil dead. Um, yes so but yeah. um you know there's some other things like they wake up in the morning and it looks like it's like 2 30 in the afternoon outside um you know uh there was some good oh, tension man. building there was some cool special effects like sam raimi stuff um yeah. I like how she has a 40 pound anvil just hanging in her garage from a rope so that she can slash she... it and drop it on someone like, come on. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. People love Allison Lohman, um, but she... she's pretty, but man, she's bad. Yeah. I really watch it again with an eye of. I'll... She yeah. hasn't, she hasn't acted since 2016. So I mean, right, right. Yeah, hmm. I can see. Um, and then the last one, butcher's crossing is a new Nicholas cage movie. It's actually decent. Mm-hmm. It's actually decent. It's not, uh, he doesn't go crazy. Nick cage on it. Yeah, um, it's a that. Western. He's out to get pelts. He goes out way far out further than they should be. They end up getting trapped out there. Mm-hmm. And it's more of a psychological thriller between their crew about, how they're going to get back. Are they going to have to end up staying out there for six months, living off the Buffalo that they're killing 
-hmm. and who's going to alliance with who and who's going to end up killing the other, you know, so that's what it is. Um, it's pretty good. It's, it's decent. It's a three-star movie. It's not a bad Nick Cage movie. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what do we have coming up, uh, to theaters yeah. and coming to streaming? So, uh, we will start with coming to streaming. Cause I have that up. Um, as you are listening to this five nights at Freddy's is available on Peacock. Uh, Paramount. The... Oh, really? Uh, Paramount? It? Uh, it says here it Peacock, but, um, <clears throat> and then another movie that, um, uh, coming to the criterion channel that I just wanted to bring up that Anderson, Brian over the film vault we're talking about is Lynch slash Oz. Um, is on the Criterion channel now. Um, the Nun 2 is on Max uh, today. Um, and then the new movie Pain Hustlers. Peacock, you're right. <laughs> Pain Hustlers with um, Chris Evans oh, yeah, and yeah. Emily Blunt. Uh, it, it did have a little bit of a theater release, but I don't think you were able to catch it. No, I didn't see this one come by me, man. Let me look. Okay. Let me just check Fandango and see what it says. It was. It's um. It's not getting great reviews. So, and it's about like the. Excuse me, the pharmaceutical, uh, you know, game and stuff, and doctors, and it's supposed to be really interesting. Yeah, it's not um, showing near me. Um, yeah, I do want to see it. It looks like it has a twenty-six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. But I like Emily Blunt a lot, so I'll probably see it. And then um, the Royal Hotel, which I've wanted to see, um, which you, which is another one you didn't get to see, did you? No, I did. I reviewed it here. You did. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, the Kitty Green movie. Yeah. Yeah. So Kitty Green, um, who directed The Assistant, yep. is back directing Julia Garner from Ozark, and she was in The Assistant. Um, this is one I I want to see. Uh, it's about two girls in Australia and Outback. Uh, we did talk about it a few weeks ago, um, so I do want to see that. Um, Shazam is going to be on Prime Video. Um, skip the it. first one? Uh, sorry, Shazam Fury of the Gods, so the one okay. that just came out this year. Um, and then uh, the one that I am most excited for, literally it's available right now, When Evil Lurk is oh on, my god yes it is on shutter so hopefully before monday i'll watch that one too yeah you got um, to man you'll love it yeah i can't wait uh bruce perky has been talking this up oh really so, yes he watched it and he's he uh the new cinematics dropped today and uh he was saying to me like saying on the episode that we that it's going to be on and everybody needs to see it. He says he's still thinking about it. So, well, um, so wait, the new cinematics, but they, they talked about. Yeah. They get screeners. They get, they see everything before us. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Cause they talk, <laughs> it looks like they have suitable flesh, pain yeah. hustlers, inspector son. Yeah. They get screeners. They get, they, they're, uh, they're, they're really, you know, cool. Like Greg, Greg Servasi, the, who, runs that he's been interviewing people since right like the right. 90s yeah i remember um, he's uh and he's on one of those film critic boards anyway bfca yeah, or whatever yeah so he's uh and then he yeah so okay all right I'm so very so they mentioned them the mentioned the movie in the episode but they've already reviewed it probably right well yeah um bruce reviewed when evil lurks before it came to theaters got so it, he's got it. so now he's just reminding everyone that it's coming to got it okay streaming. okay yeah yeah and he listens, so hi, Bruce. We love you. You're the best. Yeah, man. Um, and then coming to theaters, so we got The Killer, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, and then Anatomy of a Fall is... Uh, is uh, So you've seen it. Yeah, I saw it right before we recorded it, but it's gone, it's gone wide-ish, or maybe it's in 150 Wider. theaters. Yeah. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Ant did like it. Spoiler. That's all we'll say. I did. I really, really liked it. I can't wait to talk to review it uh, with you. Yeah. And um, I think that's that's pretty much everything. Yeah. Guys. And then I, as I mentioned, the holdovers, there's yeah. an early screening on Sunday for people if you want to catch that. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you, everyone, for listening um, again. Thank you, everyone who voted in the face of horror. Uh, I, I saw everyone's name. So thank you so much. Um, Ant, your dog's asleep. Good, finally, man. <laughs>
<laughs> I need him to go to sleep. He's been, uh, I'm, I'm dog sitting and he was really bothering me during the podcast. Like wouldn't go away. <laughs> he kept staring at me. I'm like, or he'd make some noise. Cat out of the room. I'm going to have to edit that out. Um, yeah. And yeah, everyone. Great episode, man. Um, yeah. We'll talk in a couple days. Yeah. And yeah, we've got, we've got great movies coming. Like I said, it's fall season. So it's like, yeah, it's not only good because a lot of movies come out. A lot of good movies are coming out. Yeah, and those Gotham Awards, man, that that really interests me in what the award says, the award um, season is going to be like. Yeah. Like, I I just can't believe some of those movies you said. I know, um, especially so... passages on there, that because that's such it's a great movie, but it's just surprising that it's yeah, it's gotten that, that would, kind of that... attention. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, exactly what I was going to say. I can't believe it would get attention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so follow us Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Threads, uh, Linktree, Mitch Burns, uh, Aunt Paul 311 on Instagram, and Ant's Movies on Letterboxd. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thanks. All right. Stop recording. Yeah. Right now, or do you want to? Just... Uh, three, two, one, stop. Got it. All right, so I have a 10 a.m. interview, so I need to get up at. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I didn't. No, know no, that. no, no. I know. No, I'm just saying that to say I've got to go and get okay. the fuck to bed. Yeah, sorry, man. I I, uh, I wouldn't have kept. No, it. no, it's uh, not your. It's not your fault. I I was late because my friend bringing his dog over here late. So yeah. Okay. I well, have, uh... I wouldn't have been able to record early anyway. So uh, the Royal Hotel is on Plex if you want to watch that. But oh, yeah, man, sick. I would say. I mean, you have so much, but it's like. I know. You know, you could I do know. five nights with your kid, yeah. Anatomy of a Fall, maybe, or try and do um, when e- where evil lurks or when evil lurks. Yeah, but well, we'll figure it out. Whatever, we'll figure. I'm it out. I'm gonna see the killer on Friday on on Sunday. So, oh yeah, um, you're gonna see that at the theater. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just uh, keep me posted on Sunday. If you aren't feeling good enough, just let me know. Okay, so, I'll probably be yeah. fine. I'll okay. probably be fine. Because if right. yeah, four. I'm working at four thirty. So even if I'm <laughs> up all night dead after right i know i know let me know let me know okay all all right right, man have a good night have a good night you too later man